right. Hello, everybody. Thank you. Um, this is Teach to Grow. And I was excited to basically offer a soft skills. Uh, it's funny because I've submitted so many technical talks to this, I never got in. And then my one soft skills I got in, I was like, oh, okay, shoot. <laughs> but that's my genius, I guess. Um, I do come from, uh, I'm representing Lambda School. Uh, just real quick, Lambda School. Let's see, kind of, there we go. Our mission is to expand access to better incomes by aligning the incentives of the school and the student. We don't succeed unless they do. To give you some more detail on that, maybe you've seen the, uh, the signs on the freeway. Um, we are not a Utah startup, technically in San Francisco, but we have a lot of our education team in Utah. And it's really interesting in that the incentive alignment is if you don't get, actually get a job that pays $50,000 or more in tech, you don't pay tuition. And that lasts up into five years. If somehow you don't get a job in tech in those five years, it's gone, no debt. It's pretty cool. And there's no strings attached. It's just get a job and it's gotta pay more. I always get the question, what if they made $49,999? <laughs> And I, it's the same thing. Nope. If they made $49,999, well, they wouldn't pay a cent if they made that for five years. But we know in tech that this doesn't happen. So uh, it's really cool. It's a really great, gratifying job. And it really is a catalyst to a lot of the things that I'm going to talk about today in teaching to grow. So what could teaching do for you? Why did you come to this presentation? Uh, what are you hoping to gain? Well, I think there's a lot to be gained on entry level. So if you're just coming into the industry, uh, maybe you're coming from a boot camp or an undergrad or transferring from another um, topic, there is something there for you with teaching and being able to gain from these tools I'm going to introduce. Um, Mid-level. So you've been in the industry. You're trying to level up and get better. Um, I, I think we just heard an amazing keynote with Scott talking about problem solving and not using syntax as a way to solve those problems, but looking at how we can actually talk to people and learn. That's exactly what this is pointed out with mid-level. And then our senior and management roles. Oftentimes I've worked with senior developers and they've been like, I want to be a manager, I want to move into that next stage, or I want to be a lead, or I want to be a, um, a principal. What can I do to level up? And in my experience as a manager, these kinds of tools I'm going to talk about are part of that. So in all aspects, really, of everybody that's at this conference, and of course, this goes beyond developers, designers, and everything, but that's what I'm pointing it at. So the first tool I want to talk about is empathy. And you might be going, OK, I know what empathy is, but I want to talk about a thing called actionable empathy. So the ability to put yourself in someone else's shoes and learn from it. So I think sometimes we look at these things and we go, OK, how do I put myself in somebody else's shoes? How do I actually do that um, without making things awkward or trying to uh, maybe try too hard to do these things? And so I want you to think about, we're going to go through some exercises, but there's a quote I want to talk about from Jake the dog. <laughs> so sucking at something is the first thing to being sort of good at something. And I think we're also afraid to suck at something. And we're also afraid to like learn that we don't do it. Or we talk about it, we plan it, but we never do it. And so gaining empathy is about doing and not about thinking and planning and wringing our hands. So I wanna talk about an exercise here where it's like, what would be difficult to learn? Like I want you to think about what would be really hard for you to learn right now? Just think, like, is it something else? Is it another framework? Maybe you really love Vue and you don't want to, you're scared to learn React. Um, like, there's all sorts of different things that might be nervous to you. Maybe it's totally different field. So for me, I teach and have taught hundreds and hundreds of students at Lambda School. And I was trying to figure out how can I get the language so that they could understand me better because I was speaking over their heads. And I was trying to bridge the gap and try to figure out what is the thing that I'm missing. It was empathy. And so I thought, what could I do that would just scare the living daylights out of me? And to me, it was music. I had never played, I played like hot cross buns on the recorder. Like that was my musical career. Um, and so the banjo, randomly, so random, 
Uh, there, was a, there was a guy in my neighborhood. He basically just wanted to play banjo with somebody else. <laughs> so he would play his banjo, um, and he thought that, like, I don't know, I don't even know how this, it's kind of weird how this whole thing started. And he basically said, look, I will teach you the banjo for free if you don't miss a lesson. And I was like, what? Well, how do you not miss a lesson? Like, what, what's my incentive there? And so we set up some rules for the game of how to learn the banjo. And step one was learn with accountability. And so I basically had to make sure every week he would check back with me. And he said something that scared the crap out of me. He said, I will know if you didn't practice. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, this is intense banjo. Um, and so he said he would know. And I was just like, oh my gosh, okay. And then the repercussion was I owed him $50 if, if he deemed me unworthy that week. <laughs> so it was this really interesting, high-stress uh, learning experience that I wanted to take on because I wanted my students to know about it. And so the interesting thing is I exposed this learning to my students. So I went to my students and I said, I'm trying this really crazy, stupid thing. I'm learning the banjo. I don't even know. I'm going to play in front of you to show you how bad I am. So, I'm going to show you how bad I was. Here we go. This is 17 seconds, so it won't be too bad on your ears. All right, Cripple Creek. So that was one month into the experiment. I, I think that's pretty awesome. I mean, I'm, I definitely am biased. But <laughs> um, after one month of trying so hard, that was like really cool. And I went to my students. And then something happened with the students where one of the students said, hey, I play the banjo. That was OK. And I was like, oh my gosh, I never thought of other people playing the banjo and hearing me. <laughs> But that empathy started to grow legs, and it started to help me understand how I could start talking about var, let and const, closures, high order functions, all these things that were just naturally occurring, and I had to stop and think about those banjo experiences. And so here's a video of the same song uh, a year ago, or a year after. Okay, we've got Cripple Creek on the banjo. <laughs> So, <laughs> I hope some of you thought, yeah, it sounds a little bit better. <laughs> um, but the interesting thing is, in this empathy gain and this understanding, I started to change my brain and started to change my approach to not only my students, but my environment, because I had done something um, you know, in my, later in my life um, that was really hard and almost seemed impossible. So um, the funny thing is the students um, started to really adore my crappy attempts at the banjo. So they were just like, oh, you're cute, you know? <laughs> and I was, I was like, okay, I appreciate that. At least they don't hate it. I noticed that some students would just drop out of the Zoom uh, when I started playing banjo. And I was like, okay, I got to be careful when I do this. But some students were really inspired by this. And they saw my efforts as me showing them in a very real way that I cared about them. And they reciprocated that love via stickers. So uh, they had a sticker made of me playing banjo. <laughs> <laughs> and so like this stuff uh, is, it's weird to become a sticker. It's, it's pretty cool, um, especially with something that you're, you've never been known for, ever. Like I, again, hot cross buns, no joke. So this was a really cool experience and learning for me that empathy can not only change me, but can impact the person that you're working with because I thought about them the whole time. Okay, so here's an exercise I wanna to do together. 
Think about something you want to learn that makes you a little nervous or intimidated. Like right now, what is it? Is it a new framework? Is it a new language? Is it music? Is it something else? That you have? Is it sports? Is it something you haven't thought about? Think about that for a second. What is it that really like freaks you out? This could be a really cool thing to level you up, like unknowingly, right? That's why you come to these conferences. So <clears throat> make it happen. I want you to plan and think about what could you do to do that? And so again, you might be entry, you might be mid, you might be senior, you might be a manager, you might be an owner, it doesn't matter. There's something new that scares you and it's gonna push you. Maybe you've been sitting in that comfort zone too long and it's time to change. So this will help you no matter what in all those aspects to start building empathy so you can start teaching and mentoring and leading the people that you work with. Okay, so now that we've talked about empathy as a tool, how can we actually take the good ideas and the learnings that you've occurred and put them into some kind of instructional framework? This is where, as a teacher, I can provide some insight to you in a really light framework. Um, it's called, <clears throat> yeah, here, give structured ideas. It's called the I do, we do, you do learning loop. And so this seems like common sense. I love when things ring true. You're just like, oh yeah, this seems like no duh. I do, we do, you do. Okay, what does that mean? So I do, going back to the banjo example, is when I introduced you to what empathy was. I went over and I said, this is what empathy is, and I explained it to you. Then we went through a we do. So I had you sit down mentally and think about what would you do to change? What, what's something that scares you that you would wanna do in the future? And then you do is the challenge to go and do it. That little loop helps so much in getting skills knocked out. So let's say that you're like, well, I have this idea, but I don't know how to get that idea transferred to the other person. That knowledge transfer is called pedagogy. And so when we go through that knowledge transfer and we actually can say over and over, this is how you do the thing, the I, Y loop, so I, Y loop, I do, we do, do, this thing can give you a tool to communicate your ideas very clearly and purposefully. So as an instructor, this is something that <clears throat> has really changed the way I think in getting that information across. And so I want you to think about, oh wow, okay, what could I do with this? What idea could I transfer? This could be as simple as a piece of code, a concept, um, onboarding a new person in your company. All these things can be applied to a skill and we use this loop over and over. So I do, again, let's, let's go over this again. I do allows you to say, this is what the thing is. But so many people stop there, right? And in fact, a lot of untrained and maybe senior developers do this. They're like, this is how you do it, duh, right? There's no empathy, there's no learning, there's no understanding of like what's next. So we do forces you to think about, okay, I've gotta get some substructure in place so this can be successful. And then the you do, of course, is the challenge. But if you don't give the challenge, then it just sits there and it, it just, it's kind of like what Scott was talking about, that like if you don't build the app, if you don't do the thing, it just dies. And so with I do, we do, you do, you're now having a small structure. Again, this isn't like crazy pedagogical deep stuff. This is just like a simple process to get you there. So once you've got an idea in place, you've got to retain that knowledge so it keeps being exciting, spaced repetition, you keep learning. So Richard Feynman, he says, I learned very early the difference between knowing the name of something and knowing something. This happens a lot in programming and tech, right? It's like, there's the buzzwords. Emotional intelligence is super hot right now. Um, going through and just, yeah, I know React or MobX or uh, Redux, like you start to say all the words, but do you know what those things are? And that's the challenge. Like, can you dig deeper? And so one way to know for yourself is using the Feynman technique. So number one, write the concept or objective down on a piece of paper or notepad, whatever you want. But writing it down has a lot of power because it takes it out of your mind. So many times things just stick here and they never get out. <laughs> so number one, write it down. Number two, uh, write down an explanation of the concept in its ba most basic form. So here's where it gets really interesting. Pretend you're teaching this concept to a child or new learner. 
By doing this, you'll gain insight on the parts of the concept you don't understand. This is tough. This is where I operate in my everyday life at Lambda School, is because we're taking people off the digital street, because <laughs> we're all remote, and we're trying to take them from zero to hireable. And it's, it's rough, especially as, like, 10 years ago, it was so easy, like, HTML and CSS and ActionScript is, like, all you needed. <laughs> and now, the amount of work that you need to do to get an entry-level job is exponentially harder, and you have to do so much more. And some of you might have come from that jQuery age, and you're still resisting. You know, you're still like, I'm not going into React. Virtual DOM sucks, like, all these things, and you just gotta bite the bullet. And so this technique right here can help you bite that bullet easier. So number three, review the parts of the concept you didn't understand during the teaching. So two and three are really tightly coupled. Go back to the source and relearn the concept. Repeat step two until you feel comfortable. So this might take multiple iterations. Talk to somebody that's not um, familiar with the topic and see if you, like, could you explain Redux to a designer? What a cool challenge for the Feynman technique. Like, could you do that? Uh, could you explain even what you do to somebody that doesn't like, so many times I give up, and I'm like, I work with machines. You know, sometimes it's like, it's, I understand, you know, Donatello. Uh, <laughs> Donatello does machines. Um, and this thing, we, we talk about the Feynman technique, and it's something that challenges you to level up your ability to explain and in so doing, guess what? You simplify and in the last step and create analogies and you truly start to know what that is instead of top level knowledge. So Feynman technique is what we use all the time inside of Lambda School to be able to train ourselves to get the knowledge across. Okay, so this leads to mentorship and mentorship is basically a combination of empathy, and now you have an instructional framework, a light one, with the IOI loop. You now have the Feynman technique. You have all these tools now that you could start looking at mentorship. So I wanna challenge you to find someone to mentor or teach. So the reason I even got in technology is because I got lucky and found a mentor along the way. Um, I was doing an undergrad in digital technology at UVU, and I, I was so lost at that time. I wanted to be a pilot. I wanted to be a draftsman. I wanted to be a psychologist. <laughs> I was like, I wanted to be a lot of things. Um, and I was taking all these smatterings of classes. And I took this one class. I still remember it was, it was um, Action Script. It was Flash. And the class was all about building a video game. And I was like, this is dope. I want to I wanna build a video game. And I remember I built a game. Uh, for disc golf, I don't know if you've heard of disc golf before, but it's awesome. And so I made this disc golf game where it was like a hit test object and you would throw the thing. And the instructor called me out and was like, this is really good. Like, you actually have a future in this. This is something that you should explore. Can we talk after class? And I was just like, oh my gosh, someone believes in me. Like, up until that moment, nobody had believed in me except myself. And now some external person believed in me and it empowered me to the nth degree. And so then after that empowerment, I worked with that instructor. He eventually hired me and took my career to the next level. And that was one person. Like I will forever be grateful to that person. And that person did not do that to get gain. Like he was literally only trying to help and uplift the community. And so I want you to be that one person for the future whatever, right? Maybe you didn't have that opportunity. Or maybe right now you're waxing nostalgic about your mentor, which is, which is awesome. But we start to build this pedigree of mentor. Like all these people start to become part of your tree, your family tree of mentorship, and you start to build this organic community under you. And I know I've done that. Um, I've got people in this room that are in my family tree uh, in both ways. And it's just so empowering to have that community built on training, empathy, trust. It's awesome, can't, can't lose. So that's what I wanted to talk about. Thank you for your time, everybody. Uh, it's been awesome.